Hello, this is Marcus here from EV Journey and we're about to do one of the most important trips in my Tesla Model 3. This is a rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 from 2023 and it's not the long range version. Now I nearly bought the long range version but I didn't. So why is this trip important? Because we're going from Lisbon to my apartment in the Algarve. Now before I owned a Volkswagen ID 358 kilowatt hour battery version and I'd have to charge on this route for around 10 to 15 minutes. The problem is last summer in 2022, um, sometimes we found chargers that had queues at and it was a pain to get home. So I've got a rear wheel drive, Model 3, and hopefully it should get us all the way to the Algarve without stopping to charge with around 10% of the battery. Now, Better Route Planet is saying we, are, we will arrive with 11%. The car is saying we will arrive with 10%. And 10% to me is good. If we arrive with 10%, that's good. If we arrive with more than 10%, that's excellent. If we arrive with less than 10%, then that's bad. So we're going to see. Will this rear wheel drive Model 3 do it? It's currently charged to 100%. Air conditioning's on. Um, will it do it? Or should I have bought the Model 3 long range instead? And the price difference wasn't that great. It's just I really like the LFP batteries in this one. But anyway, we'll see. We go on this trip with my family, so I give you their impressions of the car as well. And today, if you see that, it's absolutely perfect weather for this trip. It's 25 degrees Celsius outside and there's absolutely no wind. Just look at the trees. There's no wind whatsoever. So as you know, you can't get better conditions for an EV. Yeah, and the trip's around 280 kilometers. So let's get going and it'll be all motorway. I want to drive on the motorway at 120 kilometers an hour because I don't like driving slowly on the motorway. That's around 74 miles per hour. So we're just starting the trip. We've got the cat, Annabella and Kalina in the car. Um, so it says it's 283 kilometers away and it says it will take two hours and 36 minutes. 4.34. Um, the first 10 kilometers or less is um, normal roads and then we go on to motorway and it'll be almost motorway all the way and we'll try to keep 220 kilometers an hour, hopefully. So we've just done nine kilometers and we're coming onto the motorway and it said we'd arrive with 10%. But now it's claiming we arrived with 15%. So that's even better and we've still got 274 kilometers to go uh, just to let you know we're in chill mode and the cat is calmed down now because it's not happy it's in the box but it's better and we will try autopilot but first we need to get up to 120 kilometers an hour so we're coming up to another service station now and this is and sometimes I'd use this one in the ID3 to give me the push I needed to get to the Algarve. Now we've done 91 kilometers and unbelievably we're doing 15.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is absolutely amazing because ID3 would have been about 18 or 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers by now. And it says we're going to get there with 25%, but we are going to go into more mountainous region, so that could change. So let's just count how many charges are available on this one. Now here they've only got two CCS chargers um, and we won't need to use them because we've got 76% of the battery available. And so that's amazing. Um, let's see. So the one charging, there's one person charging. Yeah, so there's one person charging, another a charger is available, so that's good. Um, yeah, so there's no queue there, so that's good. So if we did want to use it, it'd be available for us. And we have been going out to 120 kilometers a bit better now than before. And it's saying that we've currently used 14, 14 kilowatt hours. Just to let you know, even though it's April, it's absolutely scorching outside. It's currently 31 degrees outside and we've got the air conditioning set to 19 degrees. Even with the air conditioning set to 19 degrees, um, the consumption is absolutely amazing. We've done 127 kilometers and it's still 15.6 kilowatt hours to 100 kilometers. And it's saying we're going to arrive there now with 26% um, and we've only used 34% of the battery. It's absolutely incredible. Um, now we're coming up to the service station now, Algestrel, and this is where I would definitely charge my ID3 at this point here. I would charge it to 80% and that would give us enough push to get us to, um, to Vera in the Algarve. 
Now, sometimes this would be full. If this was full, then we'd try the Ionity chargers a bit further on, which were a lot more expensive. So let's just see if there's anyone charging here. So there's three CCS chargers here. Yeah, charger one is being used. Charger two and charger three are being used. So at the moment, they're all being used. Um, this place normally is quite busy. You need some more chargers, really. Um, so, but we're still at 66%. Um, so we keep continuing and currently we don't need to charge. We're exactly at the halfway point, I think, 140 kilometers. And uh, the energy has increased a bit. We're doing 16.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but it's still saying we're going to get there with 26%. Now the battery's at 62%. So if we've done 50% and we've still got 62% of the battery, then that is a very good sign that we can actually make this without stopping on the way and we should have a good charge when we get to the destination. Uh, we will see because now it's going to get slightly more mountainous and that should eat more into the battery. We're coming up to Almodova and this is where the Ionity chargers are and we've done 173 kilometers and we're at 52% unbelievable and we've only got 109 kilometers to go so we're definitely going to have to definitely going to do this without charging. Now, is there anyone charging in the Ionity chargers? Yes, there's two cars in the Ionity chargers and I just see an Ionity 5 pull out there. So I don't think we're going to have to charge. This is absolutely amazing. And the, and the efficiency, look, we're at 16.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers at the moment. It's unbelievable. So now we're just coming up to the Algarve and we've got 45% of the battery left and we've got 87 kilometers to go should be great and we've already done 195 kilometers now Kalina do you prefer the ID3 or the Tesla Model 3? I prefer the Tesla Model 3 Why do you prefer the Tesla Model 3 Kalina? So it's more comfortable In the back? Yes Don't you get less leg room in the Tesla than the ID3 or it's the same? It's the same And what else? The, the roof is see-through. Panoramic roof, yes. Yes. And mummy, do you prefer the ID3 or the Tesla? The Tesla, definitely. You just can't compare. It's uncomparable. Well, what's better in the Tesla? Well, to start with, the seats are extremely comfortable. They're low, which reminds me of my Saxo. And then the window at the front is very wide and you see the road very well and the roof, the roof is nice too, I like it and the space there's so much space you can't even rest your arms because it's too far away to put your arms so I really prefer the Tesla to the ID3 but don't you miss charging? Not at all. But if we charge, we could have a 20 minute rest now. If we charge, we Yes, but I'm not games. tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if we charge in, in this the... car, we can play games, not 93. And then in the back, there is also something for the... For, to put like cups. Oh, there's something to put cups in the armrest? Yes. We didn't get that in the ID3, did we? No. And do you, what car do you think looks better, the ID3 or the Model 3? The Tesla Model 3. Looks better? Yes. Yes, it's much nicer. Even if I like the colour of the ID3. But then for the Tesla, white looks much better. Because it does contrast with all the black bits. And we've been using, for 201 kilometres now, we've been using autopilot all the way. And it's been working fine, it's great. Um, and now it's saying we're going to actually arrive with 27% even though our consumption is still at 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now that's unbelievable because there's no way the ID3 could have done that even if the ID3 does have a slightly larger battery. The efficiency of this car is just unbelievable. But we will see, we haven't got there yet. Oh, and something very important in this car is that you don't feel sick after a few hours of traveling which wasn't the case with the other one and when you accelerate in this one you don't feel your stomach coming out of your mouth uh, it's because it's in chill mode 
So we're doing um Yeah well there was no chill mode in the other one was there. Well we accelerated quicker in the other one, yeah. It was more fun the other one. When you had to clean Kalina's sickness. <laughs> yeah. We're just coming off this motorway now and uh, we're going on to the A22. This is the motor that way that runs along the Algarve. And we've still got 62 kilometers to get to Tavera. Now the battery is at 40%. Can you believe that? We've done 221 kilometers. And we've only used 60% of the battery. Uh, just to let you know, that's 35 kilowatt hours is what we've used so far and um, we've gone down a bit we're at 15.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers unbelievable again in the id3 this would be 18 or 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so the car is working perfectly for us at the moment even though the car doesn't need to charge um, i'm coming off the service station because i need the toilet now hopefully there's not going to be a huge queue at the toilet um, and we did stop in this service station a lot in the ID3 and this has a 50 kilowatt charger here um, but Anyway, we won't need to use that today because we've got 37% of the battery left and we have only got 52 kilometers to go so that will be more than enough battery um, and it's still saying we're going to get there with 26% of the battery we'll see how correct it is um, the charger is available um, so that's good but we're not going to charge there so there's no point oh, we're going to charge park here in the sun in the, in the shade. shade we're going to park here in the shade there you go so that was quick and i'm happy to report there were no queues in the toilet so yes that's a good stop on our way again with 38 percent of the battery and 52 kilometers to go so there's a big shopping center over there of ikea and everything and that is where we've actually got eight v3 superchargers um, and currently it's telling me there's two available so if we did need to charge I could charge here on the superchargers now these are only available in Portugal to Tesla owners not to any other owners of other electric vehicles but we're at 34 percent and I definitely don't have to charge there um, especially when you're considering it's 39 cents per kilowatt hour and I charged and I charged at home mainly on solar panels so this trip is going to be much cheaper than the equivalent trip in the ID3 because the ID3 would already have charged somewhere by now and if we'd have had the misfortune of having to charge a Tionity we would have paid a small fortune for the kilowatt hours we'd have added to the car but luckily now we can go all the way from home all the way to um, our flat in the Algarve and not charge and with this efficiency uh, it makes the trip even cheaper so we're just going to come off the motorway now uh, we've got 13 we've got 12 kilometers left currently we've done 15.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which is absolutely phenomenal there's no way we could have done that in the id3 um, and we've done 271 kilometers and the car is saying that we're going to get there with 25 percent of the battery which would be absolutely unbelievable if that's the case but as we've only got 12 kilometers to go I tend to believe it so we're going to come off the motorway now um, as you can see and we're going to some national roads so we're going to go to Tavira and then just after Tavira is where our apartment is and Tavira really is one of the furthest points from our house in the Algarve we really are on the border with um, Spain here so one of the longest place you can get so this car is absolutely phenomenal and and it seems we didn't need the long-range version so it was very lucky we bought this version not the long-range version because um because we just don't need it and now with the LFP and with the LFP batteries we can charge to 100% often it makes it easier for us than getting the long range version where you should only charge to 80% on a regular basis so these batteries are absolutely phenomenal the efficiency of this car is unbelievable and um, I mean I was expecting it to arrive with 10% not, not nearly 25% it's unbelievable so 4 kilometers to Tavira and 10 kilometers to our destination so we can say this car is much better than the ID3, right? Well, it's different. It's but better, in terms of efficiency, better. it's much better. Ah, you said it. It's much better. It's yeah, not just efficiency. better. <coughs> There's no way the ID3 would do this going at these speeds. The comfort as well is so much better, isn't it? No, the comfort's the same. The ID3 was comfortable. No, no, no. It's much, much better. 
Are you comfortable, Kalina? Yes. Yeah, the mum is comfortable. That's good then. Is the cat comfortable? Looks like it. Yeah, the cat's asleep, fortunately. No, it's not. Oh, it's not asleep? No. It's not moaning? No. Yeah, that's good. Just to let you know, when I bought my ID3 two and a half years ago and uh, we came on this first trip here, I'll leave the link below, there was only one AC post with two AC charging points. Um, and that could only charge at 11 kilowatts. And we were fine with that because we don't have charging in the apartment, we used that 11 kilowatt post. But now, two and a half years later, there's at least four DC chargers, fast chargers, and there are many AC posts all over the town. So really in two and a half years, um, the charging infrastructure in Tavira has really improved a lot and in other places nearby as well. So there'll be no problems charging this car over the weekend because obviously we need to get it back to 100% to go back home. Um, and we do the trip home as well to see how much we can get home with, um, to see how much difference it is going one way and going the other way. But our house is at sea level and Tavira is more or less at sea level. So hopefully it shouldn't be too different. So currently the battery's at 25% and it says we're going to arrive with 25%. We've only got two kilometers left to go. This is absolutely unbelievable. And I'd just like to say something else. In a petrol car or diesel car, it would take you exactly the same amount of time. That it is a lot, lot cheaper than doing it in a petrol or diesel car. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're about to pull up and then we'll have a look at stats. But please remember to leave your comments below. I will try to reply to all co comments. And please click subscribe. And say bye Kalina and bye. 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 And uh, we'll have a look at the stats when we arrive. We're just about to arrive. Let's see, we're still at 25%. We have to go up this hill. Will this eat into the electricity? Let's see. And currently we're at 15.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, we're at 24%. So we won't make it with 25%. Uh -huh. But nearly. But even 24% is incredible. Let's pull right here. And hopefully there'll be parking space. Normally there is. Oh, it's busy today. A lot of cars. We don't have any charging here, so we're going to have to use some public chargers. So let's check some statistics. So as you can see there, um, we've done 283 kilometers. We used 44 kilowatt hours. Apparently this battery is 57.5 kilowatt hours usable. And we've done 15.4 watt hours per kilometer. Absolutely unbelievable. And let's look at the um, consumption here. Um, so we've used 11.9% less than it predicted. We couldn't quite do 120 kilometers all the way because it was quite busy but mostly um, it said if we'd have stayed under 110 kilometers an hour then we'd have saved 7.6 percent but obviously uh, we didn't do that and we had a 6.5 kilometer hour wind from southwest that actually cost us 0.4 percent of the trip so the wind wasn't the best so on climate we've used 2.6 percent climate so it's been on air conditioning 70.2 percent um, driving and everything else has been 2.2 percent and going up hills has cost us 0.5 percent thank you again for watching this episode of ev journey we're going to bring out lots more episodes thank you and bye and i'm extremely happy with this car because it's done exactly what i wanted it to do to arrive here without charging and it's done that absolutely perfectly with a big margin 24% arrival is a really big margin. Thank you. Bye.